Hey everyone, Eugene here, back again, joined by my man Christo, fellow niche snob, and we're here to give you our top five favorite fall fragrance picks. Oh my god, it's a tongue twister. Um, we did this last year for Christo's channel, and it was just about this time time of year. I think it was a little bit colder last year, actually. I no, I don't know, because I, I, I was looking at the picture and I was wearing like short sleeve plaid shirt, like my blue and pink plaid shirt. Okay, maybe it's just... So I think it was pretty whatever. similar to this, but whatever, yeah. But we're well into fall, are we? Well, like, we had a wise? really cold couple weeks where we were pretty certain that was kind of it. Summer was over and then it came back for, you know, a short... Yeah, the weather's really, like, turned nice the last couple of days, if not more so. It's well into 30 today, so you could easily wear, you know, a, a, a summer based perfume but I've already kind of started wearing my fall my fall fragrances I couldn't wait to get them out it's kind of like one of my favorite times of year yeah me too uh for many reasons you know not just um fragrance but clothes and just the the the, the, the air cools down yeah. and it gets nicer and I don't know I just I love just the, the colors time. of the trees changing the earth tones coming out and that's kind of what I've implemented in my perfumes this year. Lots of greens and browns and and, and earth shades. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of excited. Uh, you know, I've already started wearing them. Uh, last year's picks that are on your channel, you know, they're still relevant. Doesn't mean that they're not good anymore. But just for entertainment value, we've decided to give you uh, five completely different picks. And I think as well, like the things that I wore last year, they were things that I genuinely wore. So I kind of... You know, I, I got my share of them, and now I'm excited to try some new stuff. Yeah. Because we get only about, like, a two- or three-month window. Yeah, it's like 90 days each season, right? Yeah. And, yeah, I've already started wearing my things. I'm going to, you know, try and get several wearings in. You know, it's kind of hard with a large collection. These videos aren't always, like, things that you're going to wear the most of they're just things that we will be enjoying so or looking forward to the yeah most. for sure um and there's no order we're not doing any ranking order the first one is as relevant as the last one yeah for sure anyway being the guest you want to start us off sure thank you for that uh so what am i gonna pick let me grab something new um so after the uh the recent event, the Guerlain event, uh, just a couple weeks ago, uh, I picked up um, a really amazing bottle, and I, uh, on the way home, I was like, you know what, I'm not satisfied, I need more, so I called in an order, greedy, greedy, greedy. yeah, of course, selfish perfume lover, and um, I got them to hold on to a bottle of Chamad Parom for me. And um, I, I worked it into the discount, um, even though I uh, picked it up a little bit later, um, or got it a little bit later. Uh, and I'm really glad I did. I'm really glad I, I grabbed it then, because I kind of slept on this and this line for quite a while. And I don't know why, but it took me a really long time to get into them, to kind of look at something other than Derby. And I finally did, and I've just ended up loving everything in the line. Maybe not the Frenchie as much, but um, I do really enjoy these. So um, this, I think, is uh, similar of the line. I think this is most similar to Heros, which I'm wearing today, which I absolutely love and adore. I think they're related really? in a sense. Okay. But I think Heros is more springtime, and I think Shamad's more fall time, at least for me. I found this to be a little bit drier. A little bit sweeter. Um, is there incense in it? Maybe a dollop? There could be. There could be. Very woody. Very, very woody. Yeah, I would um, agree. I don't find it to be um, particularly um, masculine, let's say. Maybe more um, really? unisex. I find it hyper-masculine. Really? It's just the really? spices on me really come out. Really? And to me, I, you know, Heros is, like, sways more green while this is... A, a, a spicy floral it's a woody floral musk with you know it's just a, an abundant of spices the spices really come alive on me um it's, i find it to be more um it's violet is it violet in here violet leaf i don't recall oh something big just jumped in the river there um but yeah uh 
I don't know, I find it to be quite unisex. Yeah, I think this is the one that gets compared to, I think this as well as um, uh, Dandy both get compared to, uh, what's it called, um, Fahrenheit. I love Dan um, Lupin, the first one, the purple juice, mm -hmm. dry, leathery, spicy. I'm more of a fan of this Frank myself. Sense. They're both gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, you, you, it's like flip a coin. There is yeah. no, not one that's better than the other. Throw Derby into the mix and... You know, it's just like this perfect trifecta of uh, yeah, absolutely wonderful um, perfumes. Yeah, I love this. I can't wait to uh, wear it when it gets maybe I don't know 10, 15 degrees cooler. So. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and really underrated, like in terms of well, in terms masculine of, perfumery. I think for the line, it's underrated because it gets overlooked by a few things, and as well, you know, even just for Shamad, everyone knows Shamad, you know, the, the women, women's. right? But nobody really. I even remember seeing someone, I posted a picture of this in the Get Along group online, and there's like, someone's like, what is that? And it's like, it's <laughs> Shamad Parom. Like, I've never seen that. I think the reason for that might be just the exclusivity. It's really hard to find and come by. Okay, And it perhaps. doesn't get discounted. And it, it doesn't get mentioned, and I think it's just, the name Shamad is just so synonymous with that women's with sense. Women's, yeah. So when someone sees something called Shamad in this bottle, they're just like, what is that? Like, they think it's, like, a limited edition or something. But, yeah, it was just kind of interesting. So, yeah, I think definitely a sleeper from that line. I really like it. I cannot wait to wear it in a month or so. Yeah, I don't blame you. Been a long time since I've worn it, but I agree. It's it's absolutely stunning. Okay, I've also gone with the Guerlain, and this is the repackaged Lidge L'Enstant, the Guerlain, in the 50 mil now known as Eau de Parfum, where it was before Eau Extreme. Oh, they, oh, I didn't realize that's what changed. Yeah, okay. so it's now in this new Listerine-style huh. bottle. It does it's kind of like what it looks Listerine. like. But, um... You've taken a big chunk out of that. I've recently fallen in love with this after hating it for over 10 years. Hate might be a little bit of a strong word, but I found it really perfumey. Let me have a spray. And, I have not um, tried this for so long. As a huge lover of patchouli, you know, I just kept trying it, trying it, trying it, and it just grew on me where, I don't know, I, you know, last year I wore it quite a bit, as you can see, and I've got all three bottle designs, so I've taken a chunk out of all three, and to me, they all smell alike. There's no reformulation here. Um, I don't even want to hear about reformulation because they, they're all, like, identical. Um, very earthy somewhat green, abrasive, mm -hmm. uh, gritty. It's got this gritty patchouli meets cacao, you yeah. like cocoa powder. So there's a whole lot of grittiness there mixed with some citruses and florals and, and this refreshing tea. So a lot of contrast in here. What I love, I love um, contrast in perfume. Kind of like, not clashing, but you got these nuances popping up on your skin at different moments of the day and it just adds for some excitement. So I still remember trying this for the first time. It's before I knew anything about Guerlain, like nothing about their history, nothing about, very little about their catalog. Um, and uh, I remember smelling it just like, wow, this is what a modern French men's perfume smells like. That's kind yeah. of what I thought. Like straight up and down if you were to get me to label like a classic uh sorry a modern um masculine french perfume this is what it would smell like right if i were to label this yeah i would totally label it like hyper masculine as well because it's just really, really woody and spicy there's a guy cutting the grass and we've been trying to yeah avoid him and he just keeps getting closer and closer but we'll see what we can make it Make it through, yeah. Okay, so that's my first pick. Okay, so let's do something a little more familiar here. Um, reviewed this about a year ago. I actually had to go back through my um, videos because I thought I put this in my fall picks last year, but I ended up actually putting in Queer de Rossi. And, and you put a massive chunk in that. A massive chunk. This was new. This is full when I got it. And this is a 250, a whopping 250 mil bottle. And... Um, so I was interest, it was interesting because I knew we talked about it, but I couldn't remember if we reviewed it or if it showed up in a list. 
and um, I went back and it wasn't in my fall picks, where the C was, but we did review this together. And it's interesting because probably since like maybe early spring, I really haven't touched um, Queer de Rossi at all. Nothing against it, it's phenomenal, I love it to death, but I've just been totally addicted to this. Um, and I wore it on a few cooler days over the summer, um, and uh, I, I really enjoy it. There's something about this I find to be really flamboyant. Okay. I find it to be like really sparkly and very, um, I don't know, colorful in the opening just something about the opening notes of this i just find so like i find the opening just out of the atomizer it's orange blossom and it's mentholated it's not minty but it's got some of that it's got this buzziness yeah exactly that kind of buzziness i don't know there's something about it i i just adore it's 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 really and it's special to me it's this huge floral I don't want to say creamy, but smooth, suede leather. I love this Adora, and apparently it's been taken out of the Privé line. Don't really know what's going on with Dior, but it's not looking good. No, no. I'm very, very happy I have 250 mil. Well, I don't know, 220 mil maybe. But yeah, I love and adore this. And um, if you were thinking about buying this and don't have it, grab That's it now chance. while you and yeah, I think they're already kind of rare. I really wanted to get Patchouli Imperial from that line. Not really sure if that's gone discontinued or not, but... So I've kind of incorporated a, a vetiver theme in, in my, my picks here. And the more I keep saying, you know, I do respect the note of vetiver, but it's not really my thing. The more I'm attracting it to me, the more I'm actually legitimately enjoying vetiver and mm -hmm. you know, all the nuances that come with it. You know, you can get vetiver. Vetiver is like the little black dress. You can match it with pretty much anything. It goes anywhere, basically. You know, and is in everything. Yeah, so you can get smoky, rooty, earthy, you know, spicy, all kinds of vetiver. Well, and as well, I think what I was, was, was going towards more is you can use it in basically every scent. It can go in gourmands. It can go in yeah. incenses. It can go in ouds. That, that's kind of what I was referring to. Okay, it's very right. versatile. You can, like like the black dress you can wear it with anything yeah. you know you can match this with pretty much any kind of genre and it'll work absolutely and my choice here is with the hermescences this is vetiver tonka um you know the first time i, I wore it the sweetness kind of overwhelmed me and i didn't like it for that that sweet tonka and praline and i said i'm never gonna wear this again and i remember talking to you about it and you're like really i you, you kind of said you liked it and I was like, no, way too sweet. I don't like it. And I enjoy it. I'm never going to wear it again. And, you know, the next day, the very next day I went and I wore it again. And, like, the second wearing, it completely changed my mind. And, like, I was like, oh, my God, this is so beautiful and so masculine and so just earthy and and filled with, I don't know, like, goodness, better for goodness. I was just so... I don't know, loving it. But to me, I get a lot of um, roasted hazelnut from this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is, it's got this resinous quality to it. And it's very subtle, like the Hermescences are known for. So it's not a loud perfume, but it does, it is something that's more of a, a skin scent, which I really enjoy. Yeah, I but, love and adore this. And yeah, I do kind of remember talking about that. So I liked it a lot, but I remember having a bit of a beef with the the dry down, the ISO um, Doesn't dry down. Me. I've gotten, I've kind of gotten over it. Um, I, I love this and adore this, and right now I think my my I've got like three Hermescents that I desperately want, and it's like this for fall, Rosic Ivana for spring, and then Marine a piece Marine yeah. for summer, like one for each. Um, uh, season and I yeah I, I this is very very like seriously very high on my Dubai list I know they say there's a lot of stuff on my Dubai list but that is really really high might be a little bit late for me to pick it up now I've done a few big ticket items recently but um yeah I, I, I genuinely love that stuff very green rooty dry I I think I had like the two 
four mil or three point eight mil samples of that, and I used them up so quickly, and I just I adored it. But the I sweet, the sweetness that that bothered me kind of dissipates like early on. Mm. You, you, if you can get past it early on, it's 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 quick to vanish. So yeah, that's kind of what what helped push me towards you know yeah for sure changing my mind on it. But it's you know it's great for fall. You know it's got those those earthy tones which I love. All right, let's do. Um, okay, let's do something really new. Uh, so literally, I bought this today. Wasn't even expecting to pick it up, but it has been on my to buy list for probably two years, maybe more. The second I smelled it, I absolutely fell in love with it. Eugene, I know, has different thoughts on. It. I don't think you hate it's it. It's not that I don't like it. I. It smells different to me than, than it does to you, which is, you know, fine. I actually think it's a pretty cool smell. And a funny thing as well was I was going to put in um, French Lover um, Bois d'Orage because I thought you were bringing it and you don't even have it. So this kind of worked out really well because I just totally bought it on kind of a whim. Not yet. Um, so my next pick is uh, Sham's Oud from Memo. So, But you got to say it. What's that? Uh, Garbage House. Oh, yeah. Um, that was pretty much the next thing out of my mouth. Um, so yeah, uh, we both were, okay, I had a little bit, a very small introduction to them before they came into the sacks in Toronto where we both essentially discovered the house. So I did actually get a little sample, like a little official sample of Luxor Oud that was sent to me in something I think I purchased online you know, from someone on base notes and they included a couple sample. One of them was Luxor. And this is back when people were kind of just discovering or just um, surrendering to the hype of, uh, of um, African leather. And I'd never even heard of Memo, but it had been around for a few years. It's and, gotta be one of the most hyped fragrances I've ever put my nose on. Um, at the moment, yeah, definitely. It's just everywhere. It's just so ubiquitous online. It's just not for me. Um, so yeah, uh, I didn't really like Luxor Oud, and we went to the the Saks, and just it was just like everything is like uh, no awful, uh, terrible, garbage, sucks. That one's not bad, but it's a thousand dollars. That one's the most forgettable yeah. thing I've ever smelled. Then we got to Shams, and it is literally on their shelf, the last one. We got to Shams, and it's like, wow, it's like, that blew me away. And it was so funny, because it was like, of all the junk that we went through, it was like one of the last things we tried. Was that and the, it the, blew my mind. the day of the Thierry Wasser event? It was, it was, yes. And Eugene described it as? To me, it's very fishy, like opening a can of fish, either tuna or sardines or anything, something like that. But you know, throughout the development, it turns into a fishy vagina, like through and through. That's all I can think of. At the Wasser event, I was like, where's the hoe with the fishy vagina or the leaky vag? Because it, it's just like, it smelled like, you know, she came from a festival or something, a sausage festival. Right. <laughs> and uh, that's literally what it smelled like until, you know, you walk past and I was like, whoa, is that shams that smells like that? And it you know, it just kind of led to one thing led to another. So I do cut because there is um, Cypriot oil in here, uh, and I and there's um, ginger as well, which can kind of give that. I like effect. ginger. I'm not sure how I feel about Cypriot. I love it. That's what kind of drew me to this, or I think what draws me to it. But so for me, I don't particularly get the fishy vagina thing. I, oh, I get totally more get of it. a um, smoldering campfire. The fire's burnt out. And there's just like smoldering embers in there now. That's what I get more than anything. It's all fish, canned fish, fishy tunas. So um, even though I have literally sprayed this bottle once, I have worn it numerous times. I've gotten a few samples and I'm really, really, really excited. I'm going to gross everyone out in my class, I'm sure. It's all girls too. It's, it's quite bold, I'll say that. I'm... I'm Really curious as to what kind of... Um, There's like four guys in a class of 34 or something. Respond. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the smell will be quite familiar then. They'll just be looking over their shoulder at each other. <laughs> Where's the hoe? Oh, I'm sinking to your level. <laughs> All right. What's next? All right. So my third pick, I've gone with another vetiver, and this is from Frederick Mull. Vetiver extraordinaire. 
a very woody, spicy green vetiver. Um, quite masculine again, like if we were to generalize these. Um, you're much more familiar with this than I am, but I have tried it a couple times. I've had a few samples, you just gave me a sample. You know, I got the pencil shavings, the cedar, very woody, very spicy. Um, you got the cumin and the cardamom. Is it cardamom? It's cumin and clove. I think I get an overwhelming spiciness of clove that later transitions into, into cumin. Um, kind of got that, that sauna effect, you know, the steam room. Yeah, this is great as well. I think this is another great pick. Beautiful um, transitions. It's constantly changing on me. I, uh, I love it. It's just classy and clean and elegant and crisp. Goes great with a white shirt, you know. Yeah, which most, vetiver does Which often. most vetivers do. Um, so, not including Bois d'Orage, French lover, because I've just finished a bottle. Um, this and... Um, Monsieur are kind of like my number, my two big ones that I want to pick up from Frederick Mall. Um, yeah, I love this. I think it's a really great pick. I do wish I had a bottle because this would be, you know, absolutely amazing time to wear this. Vetivers are a really great transitional scent as well. Like yeah, yeah, Transitional yeah. season scent as well. So they're vetivers, you know, spring or fall. Um, yeah, totally. You, know, you get the green grassy vetiver that's great for springtime and you get the woody earthy vetiver it's great for fall time and that yeah i think that's a great pick as well and you know when i wear this i can't help but think jean claude elena this is a jean claude and then i gotta kind of re constantly remind myself and and and, and say it's not it's not a jean claude elena it's it's a ropian because it's the same type of spices and it, i almost has me thinking that when this was created him and Jean Claude Elena, when he was creating Angelique Sulapoui, kind of sat there together and made them while they were having a conversation because there's just so many similarities that, you know, to be coincidental is crazy. But I do love both, mm -hmm. both of them. A yeah. lot of similarities in the spices, in the earth tones, even the color of the fragrances. Yeah. Nice uh, browns and greens. Okay. Uh, next, let me pick a, another old favorite. Um, another one I think no makes you cringe. Um, I reviewed this and I had to check as well if I put this in my list because I thought I did, but I didn't, and I was surprised. You must have discussed it somewhere else because I yeah I, I reviewed it and we have about talked this. about it. Yeah, um, M Mink. Um, I love and adore this. Um, it is one of those love or hate things. Um, you're more on the hate side. The metallic, and I totally understand, I totally, 100% understand how people can be put off by this. Now, you said something like sulfury rotten eggs, which yeah, I never that, even crossed my mind. I get the eggs from it. I get the blood accord. It's like, it's like chilled blood and mm -hmm. eggs, and then like kind of like blended together. That's what it smells like I to me. kind of, I know what you mean totally. It, I don't get that maybe because... When I, it, it didn't really it kind of dawn on me until after I fell in love with it. You know, my gag reflex always starts really? to uh, Man, warm up. The guy that wants to smell like dirty diapers. I can do dirty diapers, but I, I don't know what it is about this. And I do get a lot of familiar uh, similarities to U27 really? with this. this, but I love U27, but for some reason... I don't love that. And I've got a bottle of it too. And you I got can't, a bottle of yeah, this? I do. Oh yeah, I think I remember you saying And I can't really pick cheap. up any notes from this. I have no idea what is in here. Um, patchouli I, is I one of the only things I that I can I really pick up pin, any Incense and patchouli are about all I can really pinpoint. All I can get is like hard boiled cold eggs. This is, there's no warmth to this fragrance. No, no, it's cold sterile. It's That's why I love cold. It. It, it. Maybe it is something that reminds me of Comme de Garçon perhaps because this is very un like which again is kind of what interests me in it it's kind of like Diptyque the first thing I fell in love with from Diptyque was Homage and a lot of people say that it's just the most un like fragrance and I think this is kind of the same Byredo is pretty 
bland, middle of the road. I find them to be quite a generic, um, often like um, uh, messy synthetic, you know, synthetic in a bad I way. I um, totally and this agree. one just totally flipped my wig. I don't know. This is this is quite bold, and I like weird stuff, but I don't know why. I find this to be very well composed as well. Um, I assume it's the same perfumer because he does all of them, doesn't he? The the proprietor of the house, um, which is you know kind of explains why I find a lot of the others to be just hot messes. But this one I find to be really well composed. I wore this out actually the other night. I went to pick up food, um, and uh, I was going to stay and have a drink because it's like the only place in my neighborhood that does craft beer. So I stayed and had a beer. And while I waited for my order to go through, um, and I wore this out, and I, I totally loved and enjoyed it. I find it to be quite bold. Not sure what it smells like on you or or, or wearing it, but just out of the atomizer, it is, it is like you've got um, much more bold selections than I do. I find my mine are just this. This might be a little bit bold. I'm not sure, but these are more very clean and versatile while yours are just very bold and very strong. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. Especially I think these maybe two. Shemad not as much, but yeah, I can see these three. Yeah, like especially Clear Canage, you know, uh, I think it takes a certain kind of guy to pull off Clear Canage. I, I can do it. I don't mind, but yeah. Yeah, I hadn't really thought of that. And your next pick kind of goes right in with your ongoing So I've theme. got one more vetiver. I promise this will be the last vetiver. And this is Chanel's Sycamore Eau de Parfum. And I, you know, keep hearing and hearing and hearing how the Eau de Parfum has been neutered and it's no good. And I, I totally got to disagree with that. I had an Eau de Toilette. Oh, you had, okay. So you had a 75 mil, right? I had a 75 okay. mil Eau de Toilette. And then For some reason, it. it never worked on me. I sold it. I picked up the Eau de Parfum and I absolutely love, love, love it. Like, I, I'm in madly in love with this Eau de Parfum. Um, again, just dry. I get more woods than vetiver, but the vetiver is quite green. It's rooty. It's spicy. It's quite possibly the greatest woody fragrance of all time. Wow, bold words. Um, I know this has a very loyal cult following. Um, oh, man, that's special. Smoky. I think, you know, I very slightly in the background I can get some incense. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm not telling you it's gothic church. Um, you're much more familiar with this one than I am. Incense, but I know it and I've worn it, but I don't know the the nuances, perhaps as it's, closely as you. It's but it's so good. Like for fall, this reminds me of forest. Reminds me of green space. Um, reminds me of trees. And it's interesting because probably, you know, maybe five, six years ago when I was, you know, not as really into niche and not really as into um, vetivers, I probably would have said these smell really similar. Yeah, I can see that. Um, but, but you they're know, trying them now. To, yeah, they're so being different. Being vetiver based, they're, they're really, this one's more wet vetiver, um, possibly more spicy. This is way more dry and woody. I get more of a cardboardy thing with this, like a wet mm. cardboardy thing. I do get the pencil shavings, um, sawdust in the opening, which I love, you mm -hmm. know. I love the nuances of vetiver. I get a lot of incense in, in most vetivers, and I do qu get quite a bit in this. Yeah, I need to get a bottle of that, but um, yeah, again, it's kind of... That one maybe not uh, as high on my list to buy, but um, I do definitely... I don't know, the, the Lays exclusive. It's gorgeous. I think is... And it's rivaling the Hermescence line for the best designer exclusive line. I've, I've, I I still think the, Her the, the Chanel exclusives are my favorite. You think so? Yeah. It would be so hard for me to pick. I'd say, you know, the um, Hermescence are probably second. Yeah. All right. Great, 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 great. Okay, great. my last pick. Um, another recent pickup. Uh, this one I'm really familiar with. I... Um, I've mentioned it numerous times on my channel, mostly because 
or maybe your channel and live streams, whatever, but until recently, I was perplexed by it. I couldn't find out why it didn't last on me. Um, there's nothing about the scent that would indicate that it wouldn't last. So I did, and we, you know, kind of came down to the fact that it must be just my, my nose is just blind to certain notes in here. And um, very recently, just in time for the sale, luckily, um, I finally, finally was able to find this on my skin for more than. Is that a your bottle minutes. or mine? No, that's mine. I didn't know you. Did you bring you, a bottle? Yeah, oh. I've got a bottle. I thought yours had a cap because that's the new packaging. Yeah, that is the cap. Oh, I thought the caps came black. Nope, that's the cap. I wonder if they were repackaged because I just saw them online again last night and had a black cap. Oh, I have no idea. So interesting. That's this is uh, Encense Mythique from um, Encense Mythique d'Orient, I should say. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't know that there was a new cap style. Like you mean that style? Like with, yeah, that's. I, but it came black. Oh, I've not seen that. No, it's right on. I really like this though. I like what this is. I totally enjoy that. Um, I don't like the old ones. My Sange bottle that has this, the neck and then the cap. Yeah. I I've, don't like those. I've, I think they look I've really ugly right here. when you compare them to each other. Um, so yeah, uh, I think this is uh, just absolutely phenomenal. I'm really glad that... Uh, oh yeah, yours does look... Hmm. So mine didn't come with... Uh, See, this is not a cap. My atomizer's right here. Okay, so you unscrew this. Oh, interesting. And then that becomes... Oh. It's not really a cap, it just falls right off, but... It, it looks like a cap. They're so different. I didn't realize there are so many different versions. Because this version as well is different from my Songe, which is in the same line. It's got that big ugly neck that well, comes out. Well, that's what this is. This is the same version as But mine song. doesn't screw off. Mine didn't come with a, an atomizer. It, oh, really? Yeah. And I've got the name, might comes on the side of the bottle like that. And yours oh yeah, mine front. doesn't. Oh, interesting. I never realized how many differences there are. We're going to review this if you haven't guessed. That's why we've got, oh, yours has the Arabic on it as well. That's right. Which I thought is really cool and classy. I like that. Um, so yeah, uh, the scent itself, I, I find it to be definitely incense as you would guess. But um, what really separates this and makes it stand out is the ambergris. It's just unbelievable. Like, unbelievable. Um, I don't want to get too, too much into it because we are going to talk about this. Yeah, but, um, save it for the review. It's phenomenal. I love it. I'm so glad I picked up a bottle. Um, it would be interesting to compare. Does it remind you of anything? No, nothing. Nothing I've ever smelled. I'd say it's totally unique, but it does remind me of several other fragrances that... Okay, maybe in, if I take... Out in trying to study it, um, some other things have come to mind. But we'll save that for the review. It'll make for good discussion. Absolutely. So what's your last one? What is okay. that? There's some kind of bird screaming or crying. Sounds like a baby that needs to be changed or is really tired. All right, so my last one is... Um, Perhaps the greatest perfume of all time ever created. It's Art. definitely, you know, endured the test of time. Almost 100 years old. It will be in three years. It will be, you know, the 100 year anniversary. And um, I'm not sure if this is really appropriate for fall, but there's many versions of this. There's uh, versions for the summer. There's, uh, I know, the parfum, which is probably um, better for winter, but... I've got Chanel's number five, which I'm just like. Now, are you going to specifically say the EDT version, or are you just going to say in any version? Um, they're all they've all got similarities. Okay. Um, to be honest, I'd be happy with almost any one. The Eau de Parfum is is quite heavier and and way more aldehydic. Yeah, this is a lot more focus on the floral. This is it? very floral. I love this, uh, the EDT. Um, I prefer the EDP myself, but um, on the whole, it is, it's definitely the most iconic scent ever made. Um, and EDP, I think, is like the most, is the highest selling perfume ever made. You know, like it sold is more it? units than anything else. I thought the Eau de Parfum came out in the 80s. 
And this is like from the EDP, the, not like the yeah, Parfum EDP, or Extra. Right, right, right. EDP. So the, it was the Parfum that came out first yeah, in 1921, and then this came out the same year or it right was a after, little bit after, a, a year or two after. after. Yeah. But this is my favorite version. I don't. I, I can see that because I know you love your um, your jasmine. I know you love your white florals. Yeah, these. This is very creamy. The florals are very abstract, and I do. I do struggle picking out. You know the rose and the, there's obviously iris and jasmine in here, but yeah. it's, it's it's um rose. I've never found much from uh, any of the number fives. Myself. I just like am totally crazy about five, twenty two, what eel, and just kind of what you know transpires while wearing these. They just it's just like magic on your skin. Aldehydes, I love those soapy, clean al aldehyde yeah, they're opening. Like bubbly and fizzy. Yeah, and totally. Whatnot, champagne like yeah. aldehydes. Yeah. It's it kinda like sparkles. Yeah. You know. Almost like popping a, a bottle of champagne. Mm -hmm. But uh, very fitting I think for, for still the warmer days in fall. Maybe not the best choice in the colder days, but I'll still be wearing it. And just kind of a representation of the houses that I'm really enjoying. Yeah. So definitely a, a clear theme there. And that, you know, I just kind of noticed that right now. And it's then, not like it was planned. And then kind of number five at the end. Yeah, I, I did kind of save bit. number five for the last. All right. You got, you got more of the earthy, woody theme going on here with the vetivers and, and the patchouli. Um, you've obviously gone quite smoke. Cold. Lots of lots, smoke. Lots of smoke, smoke yeah. And a bit yeah, of yeah, leather. Totally. Very smoky, very spicy. So, should we get them to uh, mention their top five? Yeah, or that'd be great. You they're know, most anticipated. I love they're, interacting with our viewers. I think we got You're some, much better than me. Much better. Yeah, you don't even respond to, met, to like texts. Well, <laughs> I, I do as quickly as I can. Yeah, yeah. actually, you're not bad with texts. Um, but no, like YouTube, that. I'm terrible, and you're much better, so... But I mean, our viewers, I think we have some of the most knowledgeable viewers on all of YouTube just reading through the comments. I'd say the most. Yeah, to yeah, be fair. yeah. But yeah, we'll be polite and say so I'm, some of I'm, I'm curious. Right, right. Don't want to get too egotistical, but I'm really curious as to what some of them will be wearing. Oh, yeah, they'll be during the fall picks. season. Absolutely. So. And yeah, what they think of ours. Yeah, for sure. I mean, not the most. I, I, I didn't go with the most outrageous or the most bold, but just things that i can wear easily every day um you know to work or i think for me why i go bold for for fall is because i love it so much and i get so excited and i wait and wait and wait and wait for it yeah so it's kind of like some fall scents can lap over into winter but kind of once it rolls around to like april may you just can't really effectively wear a lot of the stuff so it's oh, no, kind of no, like no. from like april i'm just like hurry up fall hurry up so it's just like i'm out there and i want to be as like you know daring and as you know strange and out there as i can be i think that's kind of what it is for me so then by winter when winter comes around i've kind of toned down a bit i've kind of tamed down a little bit and my tastes are getting a little bit you know back because i've gotten my fill of the cold weather sense i think you know being in canada in this climate we've got great perfume climate so we can really get um, everything yeah well, you get a taste of all of our our, our genres and, and seasons and our, our winters are extremely cold. Our, our summers are brutally hot and humid. You know, our falls and springs are great too. Yeah. For, it, our falls and springs are actually the perfect conditions for wearing perfume, I believe. Yeah. No question in my you know, opinion. Yeah. It's not too hot where you're going to sweat off your perfumes and it's, it's not so cold that you just walk outside and it's like, right, <laughs> gone. Off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See yeah. you later. Yeah. Anyway. All right. 40 minutes and, uh, See you later. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you soon, all right?